Customs officers are at war with smugglers in ports, airports, and at sea. Coming up. Hello there. Customs officers pay a visit to an illegal cigarette dealer. Well, basically, we've had information that you may be selling cigarettes from the premises, OK? I'd like to just pop in and have a chat with you about it, if that's all right. Yeah. OK. In Portsmouth, a suspect gets angry when his new car is dismantled. And officers find a suspicious substance in a suitcase in Gatwick. There it is. So, good result. Let's go, Nick. It's early morning rush hour, with dozens of flights arriving into Gatwick from Africa and the Caribbean, source areas for Class A drugs. Customs officers are on high alert, searching passengers who fit profiles associated with smugglers. OK, I've just x-rayed a passenger's bag, and you can see there's clearly two uh, rectangular shapes there, so I'm just going to cut the bag open and have a further inspection of what those shapes are. The passenger told immigration he has no money, will be staying in Britain for two months, and a friend has agreed to pay all his expenses. It's a story Mike has heard many times before from drug couriers. It's well concealed, but Mike thinks he's found a large quantity of cocaine built into the case. There it is. White paste in there. Yeah. The paste tests positive for cocaine. So good result. Let's go, Nick. <clears throat> Ten fifty-five. Yeah. So I've conducted a test on the bottom of your suitcase, which has shown a white paste. Right, I've right. a white paste. Yes. Yep. I've conducted a test on it, which says it's cocaine. Oh, there. Yeah. OK, and therefore the time is 10.55. Mm. I'm placing you under arrest on the suspicion of being involved in the importation of a controlled drug. OK, if you could follow this officer, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Right, well, that's all going to be discussed with you later. I will remind you that everything you say will be noted down now, OK? The attempted importation has failed. Sit on that seat there for me, please. And it was a long way from being the perfect crime. He's got a really duff invitation letter. The grammar of it was awful. Um, there was capital letters mid-sentence. It wasn't very good at all. There was also a signature on the bottom of the invitation letter. And the writing was very, very similar. So I assume that it was written by him himself. It's a serious crime carrying a maximum of 15 years. Underpants down. OK, up. The officers want to find out if anyone else is involved, and the investigations could take some time. Yeah, that's all right. Um, we've just nicked someone, so there's a good chance I'll be late. The man initially observes his right to silence, but he soon starts giving information about possible accomplices. Okay, what is the name of the person that's meeting you here today? Yeah, very. Okay, and what does he look like? Right. Okay, how tall or small? Yeah, for tall. About my height. About five foot ten. Long hair, short hair. Bald head. Like mine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mike decides to put out an announcement for the man to come to the information desk to see if they can catch him too. About 34. Bald head. Bald head. About 5 foot 10. About 5 foot 10. If he's involved, it's unlikely he'll fall for the trap, but it's worth a try. In Portsmouth, officers are hunting a possible target vehicle picked out by the intelligence hub. Unfortunately, it's, it's a bit difficult to actually say whether it's going to be um, cocaine or heroin or cannabis. What tends to flag more than a specific type of commodity is criminality or suspicion. And from that, you tend to get a job that will fall into one of those categories. Um, it could be, particularly at this time of year with stuff coming up from Africa, it could be anything as, as bizarre as tortoises. 
time. Drug smugglers are adept at seeming normal, so it's Richard's job to hunt for the incriminating details. I mentioned about the car, so can you tell me what the situation is with the car, please? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Right. I might keep the car here, and I might take it back, I don't know. So you bought it when you were in Libya? Yes, I did. It's yeah. your own car. Okay, how long have you been, a, where do you normally live, please? England. In England, so yeah. how long have you been away for? Uh, two months. Two months. That's your return ticket there, is it? Can I just have a quick look at that, please? This is a one-way ticket. This yeah. Is a ticket. No, this is the ticket you obviously got for this trip. Yeah. Okay. When did you book the ticket, the, the trip, return trip back? How long ago did uh, you book La it? Havre. Did you book it when you got to La Havre today? I did. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And what's been the purpose of your two months away? Um, I went for um, Ramadan month. Yes. The fast month to Libya. Okay. And then I um, waited for the car and uh, basically I waited for the car to um, be ready. Then I came in the car. The long trip and one-way ticket are both reasons to investigate further. And the suspiciously clean interior also makes Richard think the car may have something to hide. You can it. You can flew over there. Let's walk the car. Um, it's not a new car, a second-hand car. Mittel bought from a dealer, he says. It's a second-hand car? That's, that's what, what I, he says. It's got the shrink wrap on it. That's what and that's what he says. He says it's not a brand new car, but he said he has bought it from a dealer. Uh -huh. um, so I think it's worth it because he's just, you know, Push the car in Tripoli, which is not something that we normally get here, is it? So I think it's it. worth looking at. Richard must now tell the man his new car is going to be searched in the specialist rummage bay. We've got a ramp here we're going to put on the ramp just so we can look over it a bit more thoroughly than we could do here. We have a waiting room that you can sit in there if you wish to keep warm. Um, yeah. Just to let you know what the situation is. Okay. We're obviously dealing with this. Hopefully, as soon as we can. It's not going to take a long time. Can I just put my clothes back? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, so, um, do you want me to take the car out while I do this, or...? No, no, uh, no, you put the... The driver the could be annoyed place. because he has something to hide, but perhaps he's just nervous about having his new car pulled apart. The smuggler caught in Gatwick is now being transferred to the custody cells, where the reality is beginning to sink in. You just stand in front of that desk for me. All right. Is there anybody that you want to tell a friend or family that may be meeting you or worried where you are? I would like to call. I would like to let me away from The man is locked up, while the officers out back work out how much he'll be charged with trying to smuggle. As you saw on the x-ray, there was two of these. Um, from what we've got here, we've estimated that the total amount of cocaine could be two kilos, which has a street value of about £100,000. And in the terminal, the person meeting him has answered the announcement and has been arrested. The poorly planned crime has gone wrong on every level. We've gone to the information desk in the North Terminal um, where we've put out a call for the person meeting the courier today and a gentleman has come forward and said that he was here to meet him. We've subsequently arrested him and he's been brought here today to the custody suite and also the driver of the, the vehicle that was also here to meet him, he's also been brought here, the taxi driver. All three are under arrest and placed in cells for questioning. It's now up to the investigation team to find out who was responsible and ensure a successful prosecution. It's another important seizure, but with all the suspects claiming to know nothing about the cocaine, it could take some time to work out who's guilty. After a long wait for a technical officer to arrive, the driver of the suspect Libyan vehicle is getting annoyed. Yeah, um, can, can you just give me an idea how long it's going to take, please? I really can't well, give you. 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour, two hours, what? I, mean, I would suggest, you know, if we don't find anything, you know, probably half an hour, 45 minutes if we don't find anything. The car is suspiciously clean, having just driven 2,000 miles from Africa. This, this is the problem with the vehicle, it's, it looks too clean. The inside's totally clean. They need to examine every possible space to ensure it's not being used for smuggling. And we're trying to be as, as, you know, as reasonable with you and as tight as we can. I'll tell you um, what, the Brits come in you know, and out of Libya. Yes. But not a single person gets these people. And hopefully I've tried to explain to you as reasonable as I can as to why we're doing it for. 
We will look after the car. The officers are expert mechanics, but this man is clearly very protective of his new car. Do I look like a drug dealer? Do I? Uh, hey? I'm not a good enough person to, you know, to really recognize a drug dealer. You've been doing the job long enough. I mean, sh surely you should know, shouldn't you? Not everyone that smuggles is obvious to us. The whole search takes nearly two hours and finds nothing. And the long wait has allowed the angry driver to calm down. Your car has been looked at. Mm -hmm. They haven't reduced it to the point of the They haven't, have they? No, honestly, they haven't. honestly, honestly, they, they, haven't. they haven't. So you'll have the car back in a couple of minutes and we'll put your bags in and we'll let you out the back gates. Okay, you mate. Away on your way. All right. Okay, thanks for your... I'm sorry if I was a bit abrasive, you know, just to... Don't worry, part of the, part of the daily grind of the motorbike. <laughs> Nobody likes the car being put on the rack. You ever wrecked my car, have you? You are more than welcome to obviously check it over there. <laughs> that was there before we got here, then. Not the, it's not so much the delay, it's just the actual... You know, I have no idea what has been taken out of the car and what has been put back in the car. I don't know. It's quite upsetting. Still to come, officers pay a cigarette dealer a home visit. You've had information that you may be selling cigarettes from the premises. She knows that she's done something wrong. Coming up, a suspected swallower gives a massive hit for cocaine. In Bristol, the usual officers have been joined by the National Strike Force to carry out house searches on people suspected of dealing illegal cigarettes. All the intelligence has come from anonymous tip-offs on the Customs Confidential Hotline. I've got, I think it's 19 packages from Tobacco NIU, um, hopefully to execute today. For officers entering suspect homes, it can be dangerous. I've yeah. been in a situation before where the whole street is sort of yeah. and I don't yeah. know, uh, so you don't yeah. want to hang around. No, once you're on the ground. If you don't like it, you're out. Yeah. So. It may seem heavy-handed for selling a few cigarettes, but the black market costs the Treasury £2 billion a year. We're going to this lady in Bristol. Information has been received that she could be selling cigarettes at her home address. Started selling cigarettes in the past two weeks and have been dealing Lambert and Butler. But you've also got to be very mindful with this, that a lot of this could be malicious as well, so... <laughs> It could just be a, a stitch-up. Many tip-offs are found to be false, so the officers initially go in without a warrant. And that means negotiating permission to search the house. Hello there, this is not Hello, I'm from Revenue and Customs. Right, basically, we've had information that you may be selling cigarettes from the premises, OK? I'd like to just pop in and have a chat with you about it, if that's all right. Yeah. OK. I think what we sent back off the door is that... Um, Luckily, the woman confesses and lets them in. Basically, what have you been doing? Your son's brought cigarettes back from holiday. You've been basically selling the cigarettes. And all the evidence the officers need is sitting on the dining room table. You need to do a search of that house. Okay. Yeah, there's a few in the front there, doing which is around. And that, that's all it is. Right, OK. Do you want that? Make me feel like a terrible thief. I feel like a terrible scene. And she's obviously a bit nervous. She knows that she's done something wrong. She's got a kitty set up downstairs with all her facts. There's a big suitcase here that shows that somebody travelled to Parma in Spain on the 9th of October, whether that was her or her son. It's a very big case, very typical of a cigarette smuggler's case. Is that your big suitcase up there, the big half-sided one in the spare room? Well, we all use it, you know? Right. You're all right. committing an offence by selling these cigarettes, OK? So the goods will be seized from you. And with perfect timing, a customer turns up to find the shop closed indefinitely. And the guy just come to the premises and look at all the shop. Oh, right. What, well, somebody's just come and gone? Looks like we've just had a buyer that's just... The black market is clearly booming in Bristol. In Gatwick, the Customs Intelligence Hub has given officers information that a drug swallower is coming in from the Caribbean. A girl being questioned at immigration seems suspicious enough for Customs to do a drug swab, which gives a massive hit for cocaine. Morning, madam. 
drug swallowers are often forced into the crime and told nothing of the dangers and the possible lethal consequences of a burst package. She said that she actually came in with someone named Peter. She met him on the beach and he's got all her money, 400 pounds, and he's already gone through. So it doesn't look too good, you know. The suspect has denied taking cocaine, so a positive urine test would suggest she has swallowed drugs. There's no line by the THC, so she's positive for cannabis. There's no line by the COC, so she's positive for cocaine as well, which would indicate to us that she has cocaine in her system. The woman will now be arrested and x-rayed for packages. Ooh, showing up positive mm. for cocaine. Yeah. Okay. But to the officer's frustration, she's now claiming to have used drugs. Well, by the moment, just for and I have taken cocaine. She has no, taken. No. Right, okay. She has taken, yeah? She has taken. Uh, why didn't she tell me earlier when I put she she you the police? She was worried. She was worried. Yeah. Right. Okay. But the officers aren't convinced. So we just want to be sure you haven't got any internal consumer in you. They suspect she may be pregnant, and so will be taken to a private hospital to have her body scanned safely. That means waiting for another interpreter, and that means putting on the white suit. Because she's, um, we've got her on suspicion of swallowing, um, we always put them in a white suit, because what we'd be concerned about is she maybe started to pass packages in the cell, whether she may pick them up and harm to herself. Sometimes it might be possible that she could retry and swallow them again. We can see through the suit, that's why we need her in, in the white suit. The officers are extremely concerned for the woman's health, and all the signs are pointing to a definite swallower. If so, she'd be looking at a lengthy sentence. It's a bit concerning because with her, her original story, when we asked her, she, she doesn't touch drugs, she doesn't drink. It's then, oh, well, I smoke marijuana, um, I have taken cocaine. So her story is continually changing. When we take her down, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see packages in her body from the way her story is. It's a nervous ride to the hospital, which could decide the woman's future. Customs officers also stop smugglers who try to bring in drugs using the postal system. In October 2002, a routine parcel exam uncovered a massive haul of drugs hidden in a shipment of doors. And I recall getting a, a phone call at home that there had been a major seizure. Within it, they found hold dolls. And examining the hold dolls, they found packages which turned out to be a mixture of Class A and B drugs. Um, and I can recall getting a phone call about two hours after that to uh, advise me that they had found something else. In the box were live ammunition rounds and something altogether more frightening. They came across uh, another box and you can imagine their surprise when they opened it to find a grenade. And I think everyone stepped back about half a mile. The decision was made to do a controlled delivery and catch the culprits in the act. But all they had to go on was the consignment address in Devon and a phone number which belonged to Timothy Andrews. One individual in particular, Timothy Andrews, we conducted surveillance on him uh, over that weekend. Officers tailed Andrews round the clock for three days. Mobile phone analysis identified Andrews' partner in crime, Andrew Griffiths. The race was now on to get the package delivered on time. The team replaced all the drugs and ammunition with props and prepared to make the delivery. The controlled delivery commenced on the, uh, on the Monday morning. One of our officers acted as the TNT delivery driver. He drove it down to the address, the consignment address in Ivy Bridge. Uh, but within the actual consignment, we had placed um, an audio device, in fact, a number of audio devices. The officers were hiding, waiting for the right time to strike. Uh, when it became clear that the package was been broken into and been dismantled, um, I decided at that point that I would call the knock. 50 armed officers stormed the building and found two henchmen. Andrews and Griffiths were elsewhere, but were still being followed and were arrested. They would plead not guilty, but customs investigators used mobile phone cell tracking information to tie them to the crime scene. But on, on this occasion and on four previous occasions, 
where consignments had gone to, to that address, that they had been in the vicinity. Um, and that's more than coincidence. The evidence convinced the jury it was Andrews and Griffiths behind the crime. The henchmen were acquitted, and the sentences handed down to the smugglers made a happy ending for the officers. Um, sentences handed down by uh, judge, trial judge, uh, resulted in, in a 40-year sentence for Griffiths and a 39-year sentence for Andrews. But they will be serving at least 15 years. Back in Bristol, Russ and Jane haven't found any more cigarettes and decide not to prosecute the woman. Instead, they want her to turn informant. But, um, do you think we can get some, try and get some details about her son? His name? I think we've got two if we can. Ooh, young lad, where's he, where's he picking these up for? I mean, uh, you want the... No, I'm not getting you into trouble. Right, you don't I'm want to tell us anything about him, trouble, then? No, no. Could you pass on a little message to yeah. him? He is in danger of uh, not only losing his cigarettes, but losing his vehicle, etc. So it could be All quite right. hefty for him, so... Seizing the 9,000 cigarettes, they now want to get out before it turns ugly. We don't really have the public on our side because the locals think she's providing a service, so people aren't sympathetic to us. So sometimes once people have clocked who we are, it's better to just get the fags and get out, isn't it? In Gatwick, the suspected swallower is back with the x-rays. She's put back in the cell while the officers take a look at the results. If she had swallowed something, you, you would possibly see the shapes of packages. They'd be down here, they can be collected up around here, and there's nothing, there's nothing at all. Compared to an actual swallower, the difference is clear. See the package shapes collected down there, whereas that one is totally no shapes whatsoever in that one. It was negative. It's an anti-climax for the officers, but they're glad she'll be OK. Take her back up to the south terminal if she wants to, so she could be on her way. Yeah, it's negative. <laughs> Every, every, all the way down the line to me, I was thinking, yeah, it's going to be positive, positive. The way she was acting and the things she was saying, but sometimes it happens like that, you know. Six months later, the Gatwick cocaine smugglers pleaded guilty and were sentenced to six and a half years in prison. The taxi driver was released without charge.